Hello, Algebra 2 students. Today we are going to do 4.6 notes. It's called Perform Operations with Complex Numbers. Before we start, I just wanted to mention that the very first section that we ever did in Algebra 2 was section 1.1, and it was called Apply Properties of Real Numbers. And I mentioned what real numbers were. Real numbers include your fractions, your decimals, known as rational numbers, and then your integers, which are your negative um, numbers and their opposites. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. Your whole numbers, which are 0, 1, 2, 3. So 0 and all the positive numbers, but whole numbers. No decimals, no fractions. And then we had irrational numbers. The irrational numbers were like um, pi or the square root of 2, Something to that of a something to that effect. So that was the real number system. Today we are going to talk about imaginary numbers. Yes, imaginary numbers do exist. So they're important in the engineering field. So engineers use it, use imaginary numbers. We aren't going to get into too deep as far as the applications go, but just be aware that it it is used. So the imaginary unit was defined because um, you can't take the square root of a negative number. Now the negative can be outside the square root, but notice anytime you've worked with square roots, the number inside the square root symbol has always been positive. So the definition of the imaginary unit is, it's notated by the letter, the lowercase letter i, i equals the square root of negative one. Now if you were to use a calculator or your phone, and you were to take the square root of negative one, it'll give you an error. So what you would do is you would hit negative one and then hit the square root button if you were to use a phone, and it would give you an error message because it's not defined in the real number system, but it is for imaginary units. And so using this, if i is equal to the square root of negative one, oops, always put the negative inside the square root of inside the square root symbol if you're talking about imaginary numbers. If you were to square both sides, this is the defi this is also part of the definition. And put two stars here, because you're going to need it in this section. Anytime you see an i squared, you're going to replace the negative one for that i squared. Okay, a complex number has two parts. It has the real part, so real numbers are numbers you're used to. And then it has the imaginary part. So a plus b times i. Now, a is a complete real number like, say, 4 or 5 or 7. This part makes the bi the imaginary portion. And that is in standard form. So a plus bi is the proper way to write a complex number. The conjugate of a complex number would look something like this. If you had a plus bi and I asked you to give me its conjugate, then it would be a minus bi. And I put arrows going either way because if I gave you a minus bi, its conjugate would be a plus bi. And so let's write an example. Right now we're just doing some definitions. We haven't done any operations with them, but we will. So if I gave you 2 minus 4i and I ask you to give me its conjugate, you would say, you won't make the real part the opposite in sign. Keep it the 2, but make the imaginary part opposite in sign. So 2 plus 4i would be its conjugate. And even though I had you bubble in i squared equals negative 1, I wrote it down below here as well. Remember, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, negative one which means that i squared equals negative 1. We always will reduce i squared to negative 1 in our problems with i. All right. Let's do some solving quadratics with um, complex solutions. Now, you don't know it's going to be complex until we get to this one step. So remember, if you're solving by square roots, you want to put the constant on the opposite side. So subtract 20. zero minus 20 is negative 20. Divide both sides by 5 because you always divide by a, which is in front of x squared. You get x squared equals negative 4. 
And then the last step in solving an equation by square root method is to take the square root of both sides. Notice you always put the square root, of, or you've always put the number under the square root sign. So you don't leave the negative outside the square root. The entire right side has to be under the square root. The square root of x squared is x. However, the square root of negative 4 is not 2. That would only be positive 2. So to compensate for the negative that's inside that square root symbol, you're going to have to put, and remember, always put plus or minus first. You put the imaginary part. And then the square root of 4, now you can, you've compensated for the negative, and now just think of the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. We don't leave it like this because that looks weird, so we just write our answer as, so always put the i after the number. And this is your answer. Let's do another solving. So for this particular one, you want to move the negative 15 to the other side. So add 15 to both sides. Good. And our second step is to divide both sides by negative 2. So you have x squared equals negative, and I like the negative in the numerator. If you ever have a choice, put the negative in the numerator. It makes life really easy. Okay, and then um, we can take the square root of both sides. Because I'm running out of room, I'm going to go ahead and continue this problem over here. Okay, so the square root of x squared is x equals, always put your plus or minus there. And now we can, what we need to do is go ahead and separate them into um, or go ahead and compensate by putting the i first. So let's do that. And then let's separate the 5 and the 2 into a numerator and the denominator because that's what the quotient property says you can do. Here's what you cannot do. Most students want to do this and say this is their answer. And remember, just put the i to the side, but don't put in the denominator. It should be in the numerator. Um, the reason why this is wrong is you cannot have a radical in the denominator. That's a no-no. You, In order to simplify a radical correctly and completely, you must eliminate the radical that's in the denominator. And if you remember, the conjugate of radical 2 is just radical 2. So you multiply top and bottom by radical 2. And so x equals plus or minus radical 10. Never add the 5 and 2 together. And that's why I put the little time symbol there. And then radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2. And then put the i. Now you can't divide 10 by 2 and call it radical 5 or whatever. So that is your simplified answer. All right, adding with complex, whoa. That's crazy. Okay. Adding with complex numbers is pretty simple. So all you do is you combine like terms. So that's all you do. So what I like to do is I like to put the real numbers first, which is what you should do because we want to put our answer in standard form. So I'm going to group my numbers. So this is the real part. So I'm going to write them next to each other. And then this is the imaginary part. So plus 6i and negative 4i. I guess I can use a different color. Okay, now for our final answer, negative 5 plus negative 2 is negative 7. Plus 6i minus 4i is 2i. This is the best way to write your answer because it is in standard form. Now, is it wrong if you put 2i plus negative 7, it's not wrong at all. But if I ask, write it in standard form, you would write it in that form, where you put the real number first, and then the bi, the imaginary part on the trail. Okay, let's do the, a second one. So the real part is negative 5 halves plus 3 fourths. And the imaginary part is negative 2i plus one-third i. Right. 
here we have some fractions, so we are going to have to find a common denominator. So I'm just going to do um, this out here to the side. So we have negative 5 over 2, and you have 3 fourths. So a common denominator would be 4. That would be the common multiple. So you would want to multiply this fraction top and bottom by 2. So you have negative 10 fourths plus 3 fourths, which would be negative 7 fourths. Do the same thing to the other two. You have negative 2i, or negative 2, we don't really care about the i part, plus 1 third. Okay, and so the common, you want, remember this is negative 2 over 1, so you want to multiply top and bottom by 3 so that the denominators match. So that is negative 6 thirds plus 1 third, which is negative 5 thirds. And I don't even put the plus in there, but you can if you want. And then to write the imaginary part. So that is um, the answer in standard form. Go. All right, subtracting, same thing, although there's one additional step instead of adding, and that is to distribute the negative first. So let's write that down here. Sometimes you have a negative 4 out here, but in this case, there's a 1 here. In this case, there's a 1. So let's, um, we don't have to do anything to the left because nothing is being distributed. So just rewrite it. Here, you're going to multiply negative 1 times a negative 10 and a negative 1 times a 3i. So that would be a positive 10 minus 3i. And then you can group them. So you have negative 2 plus 10 minus 4i minus 3i. These two add up to 8, and those two add up to negative 7i. And this is just going back and doing what you did in chapter 1, but instead of x's, you have i's. And you're going to have to realize that if you end up with i squared, you need to replace it with negative 1. Okay, for the second problem, same thing. So we have negative 25 minus 16i. Here, distribute. And there, distribute. Well, be careful and we'll notice that's a negative times a negative. So 7i. Um, grouping them. Do you have to group it? Honestly, people make mistakes dropping signs like nobody's business. So it really does help to put in that additional step. It takes a second longer. So grouping the negative 25 minus 3, and then but some people will still disregard that there's a negative right there. You need to be able to do that. These are mistakes that you can't afford to make at this stage. So that's a negative 28 minus, now I still have people in Algebra 2 call that 23. And it's not. It's not 16 plus 7. It's negative 16 plus 7, which is negative um, 9. And that is your answer in standard form. So now you know how to add with complex numbers, anything with i. You know how to subtract with complex numbers. We still need to multiply and divide by with complex numbers. So again, just stuff that you should already know. But when you're multiplying and dividing, here's where you need to write down. You are going to, and you should write this anywhere on your paper. Anytime you're dealing with negative, um, anytime you're dealing with an i squared term being negative. So remember, write that down on your notes, write it down on your worksheet when you're doing it. Multiplying, let's do a simple one where you're just using the distributive property. So you're multiplying one number outside the parentheses by each number in, inside. So it's negative 24i minus 12. Notice i times i is not i, it's i squared. So here's the first instance that we're gonna replace i squared with negative one. So you don't replace i with anything. So leave negative 24i alone, minus 12, but replace this i squared with negative 1. Honestly, that's the additional step that you have to do. So this is negative 24i. Negative times a negative is a positive. And then I'm just going to rearrange it so I put the real part first and the imaginary part second. 
so that I write it in standard form. It's just nicer looking. It's a good habit to have. Okay, for the next one, you're multiplying two binomials. Notice the first parentheses has two terms, so that's a binomial. The second one is a binomial as well. So two binomials multiplied, always use FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. Draw arrows, there's no shame in it. So first times first would be these two. Outers would be these two. Inners would be those two. Oops. And last would be those two. If the arrows bother you, then just do them one at a time and don't even draw the arrows. So negative four times six is negative 24. The outers is negative four times negative two i. Inners, 18 i. And last, negative six i. We're not done. We have to combine like terms. And the two like terms happen to be in the middle, which is nice. So it'd be 8i plus 18i. Oh, I forgot the last thing I did wrong here. It's negative 6i squared. Because i times i is i squared. So we have negative 24 plus 26i minus 6. And replace i squared with negative 1. So we have negative 24 plus 26i plus 6, because a negative times a negative is a positive. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add the real numbers together. So negative 24 plus 6 is negative 18, plus the imaginary part. But because it's made up of real and imaginary, it's called a complex number, which makes sense. It is kind of complicated looking. Now let's go ahead and do the... Last one for multiplying. So this is just another fancy way of writing 3 minus i times 3 minus i because it's squared. So you're going to use FOIL again. I won't draw the arrows this time. See if you can keep up with me. So 3 times 3 is first, 9. But if you want to, go for it. The outers is 3 times negative 1i. So you can put a negative 1 here to help you kind of weird looking, but the inners are also negative 3i, and the last, a negative i times a negative i is positive i squared. So we have 9 minus 6i plus, remember, i squared is negative 1. So we have 9, so we have 9 plus a negative 1, so that's 8 minus 6i. What can you do wrong in that problem? Probably draw the sign. I mean, that's usually what students do, forgetting that i times i is i squared, which I accidentally did on b. I mean, we make mistakes, but we need to learn from them. Okay, next is dividing with complex numbers. So remember, because you have a fraction, you're going to have to multiply by the conjugate. So this is really key. And that's why I said you need to know what a conjugate is, or you can't do this problem. Okay, the conjugate of 4i is just... 4i. So you multiply top and bottom by 4i. So let's rewrite this. So we have 4i times 2 plus i. And the bottom is um, 4i times 4i. I'm just rewriting it right now. Nothing else. I'm going to distribute in the numerator. So, two. so that would be 8i, be really, really careful here. I've known to be, I am, can make this mistake too. Notice you see two i's there, so you better have an i squared. 4i times i is i squared, all over 16i squared. Okay. Keep on simplifying until you can simplify no more. So equals 8i plus 4 times, replace i squared with negative 1, over... 16, replace that i squared with negative 1. And now just keep on simplifying. So the numerator is 8i minus 4 over negative 16. And we are going to reduce this fraction. So we have 8i over negative 16 plus a negative 4 over negative 16. And then we are just going to reduce that. And so that becomes 
um, negative one half, and I'm going to put the negative in the numerator because I prefer it, i plus, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. What should we do to go above and beyond? Let's put it in standard form. So let's put the real part first, and then the imaginary part second. So that one was actually the easier one of the two. The harder one is going to be our next one. So for our next one, we are going to still multiply by the conjugate. So you need a little bit of room here, so don't write too large. You want to multiply top and bottom by 3 minus 4i. Why will we need a lot of room? Because we're going to be doing FOIL. Because remember, you're multiplying this times everything in the numerator, and then the bottom times everything in the bottom. So we're using FOIL twice. So FOIL in the numerator, FOIL in the denominator. And instead of drawing arrows, I'm just going to put FOIL right here. The key thing is what are you multiplying by? So you needed to know the conjugate is 3 plus 4i is 3 minus 4i. Don't worry about the numerator. You don't ever multiply um, the numerator by its conjugate. So now to do FOIL, um, we have 2 times 3, um, negative 4i times 2, negative 5i times 3, and lastly, your last numbers are negative 5i times negative 4i. That's a positive 20i squared all over. 3 times 3 is 9. Um, then you have your outers. So maybe I will draw a couple of arrows. So you have these two. So that's negative 12i. And then these two, positive 12i. And hopefully you see those cancel at 0. And then 4i times negative 4i is negative 16i squared. So things are looking nice. You already got rid of the imaginary part that's in the denominator because you can't have anything imaginary in the denominator. Now let's go ahead and keep simplifying the numerator. So you have 6 minus 23i. I combine the negative 8i and the negative 15i plus 20 and replace the i squared with negative 1 all over 9 minus 16 and replace that i squared with negative 1. Now it's just looking really, really good. So we have 6 minus 23i minus 20 all over 9 plus 16. With the bottom sure looks nice. Okay, keep simplifying. 6 minus 20 is negative 14 minus 23i all over 25. And honestly, you can leave it like this because it doesn't reduce any further, but it's not written in standard form. So standard form would separate the real part, so negative 14 over 25, plus the imaginary part, negative 23i over 20 fifths times i. There we go. And it's okay to put the i in the numerator, just don't have it floating in the denominator. I just have it floating in the middle usually. And that's how you divide with complex numbers. The next part's pretty simple, plotting complex numbers. So when you're asked to graph points in a coordinate plane, you always have x comma y. You move right or left, and then you move up or down. It's the same thing with complex numbers. However, you have a real, so this should not be v. I don't know why it says that. Write down real. This is the real axis, and this is the imaginary axis. So you don't have an x and y axis anymore when you're plotting. You have a real and an imaginary part. And hopefully you know which is which. So when we're graphing, this part is the real part. And that part is the imaginary part. Imaginary. There we go. So let's plot. So negative 4. So you go left 4 from the origin. And then you go up to 2i. And this is negative 4 plus 2i. label your point nice and neat. The next one is going to be, notice the real part is going to be 0 and the imaginary part is negative 8i. So you start at 0. I'll do these in different colors. So you start at 0 and then you go down 
to negative 8, which I don't have enough squares. So just go ahead and make it right here, I guess. And that would be um, negative 8i. Right. And then lastly, we have 2. So go right 2 and then go down 5. So right here. Hopefully that's like decent looking. So this is 2 minus 5i. So it's not that bad at all. As long as you remember real first and then imaginary second. <clears throat> right, our last topic is, so there are seven objectives. Find the absolute value of a complex number. So remember, absolute value is the distance a number is from the origin. So going back here, negative 8i is 8 units away from the origin. Um, we won't worry about this one because it's, you know, you'd have to draw a line. But this one's a nice one to count how far it is from the origin, from 0, 0. So there's a formula to figure out how to find that distance a complex number is from a number line. So if I asked you to find this distance, oops you can figure out what that distance is. Okay, I'm going to erase that though. Go. And here's the formula. So the absolute value, so this says the absolute value of a complex number, the complex number is a plus bi, is the square root of or is that, so I don't need to rewrite it. And A is the number, is the real number, and B is the real portion right in front of the imaginary part. So let's identify, in order to do this, let's identify A and B first, or else we can't do the problem. So here, A is negative 4, and B is that number in front of I. And then we are just going to use the formula. So we're going to replace A with negative 4, and we're going to square it, and we're going to do the same thing with b, and then you're going to add them so that between them is a plus. So plus 6 squared. Don't be lazy here, and don't leave off your decimal or your parentheses because that will mess you up. So that is 16 plus 6 times 6 is 36, and also don't say it's 6 times 2 is 12. Add those two numbers together, and now you want to break, them, um, break that number 52 into square root of 4 times square root of 13. Notice I chose 4 and 13 because 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2. 13 is a prime. And that is your answer. Let's do one more. Okay, A is a positive 2. B is a negative 4. Put it into your right side of your formula. So square A, square B. Don't worry about the i. And so that is 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. Both of these numbers inside will be positive because you're squaring them. So you should have no negative numbers there. And so add them. And then um, break them into two numbers, one which is a perfect square. And I don't want to choose 10 and 2 because neither of those are perfect square. So that's 2 radical 5. 2 root 5, 2 times the square root of 5. And that is what we are going to talk about today. So you learn how to do operations with imaginary numbers. Have a great day, Algebra 2 students.